Hello. Hi. Hi, Steve Elledge. Nice to meet you, Dr. Hi. Elledge. Um, we have a live stream going on right now on, on the YouTube channel Physics Girl, as well as the, the Breakthrough Facebook page. Okay. Um, Great. Yeah. Hi so. there, people out there in Facebook land. <laughs> yes, you're the first person that initiated the wave. They appreciate that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of comments that are probably wave emojis and hellos in the, in the live stream comments. All right. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about about your research about how um, how you got involved in, in DNA. Uh, we're physicists. <gasps> You're a physicist? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I is, build robots. I was, a, I was a chemist, okay? <laughs> got so, it, okay. So I, I grew up thinking molecules are like really, really cool, and so I got a degree in chemistry, and I didn't learn biology until much later in life. And okay. what, how I got interested in, in biology was when I took a, a class where they explained DNA. And, mm. the fact, and that was right when the revolution occurred with recombinant DNA. And I was blown away because you could take DNA apart, you could put it back together, you could make genes do things. And I thought, wow, mm -hmm. I want to be part of that. Mm. It's like the Lego of life. Yes, the that's, Lego yeah, of that's life. right. And you know, you could you can just reorganize everything and rebuild things, rebuild proteins, and uh, and make them do new things. And so I thought that was so cool. And you know, that's why I wanted to study DNA. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing when I finally progressed to having my own lab was I studied how DNA actually knows when it's broken and how it mm -hmm. sends out signals to try to alert the rest of the cell and even other cells in your body there's a problem here mm -hmm. and then it, it sort of you know orchestrates a response you know you can think of it like uh, sending a signal to the police and the fire department to come in and you call in the troops and they come and fix the chromosomes. Mm -hmm. You know, so DNA can actually sense its own integrity and send out signals to, to make sure that it gets fixed. So. And so sort of the, the fire and the police response uh, process was not known before this That's research. That's right, it yeah. wasn't known. And so and with, with this, what, what can you do? Are there sort of treatments that can be made from recognizing how DNA repairs itself? Well, actually it's quite interesting because there are a number of, of different ways you can look at it. And uh, one of them is that the pathway that senses damage sometimes uh, makes a decision to kill a cell. Right. And so a lot of chemotherapy. Is that program cell death? I yes, that's program cell death. <laughs> And she's a physicist. <laughs> you got that one right. Hey, apoptosis. <laughs> yes, that's right. Really? Yeah. <gasps> done here. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and uh, and so this, the pathway that I discovered also signals sometimes to kill a cell. <clears throat> got it. And that's how chemotherapies and cancer work. Okay. So then the other thing is that if the pathway that we discovered doesn't work right in a normal person. Then you don't fix your DNA as well, and it starts rearranging, and you can get cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's another aspect of it. And a third aspect of it is that if uh, uh, some tumors, in order to uh, evolve, have broken a piece of this pathway, and if you if you're born with a uh, piece of broken you can have all kinds of bad things mm -hmm. all kinds of developmental abnormalities and you can get cancer but in you know as a cancer evolves it's sometimes good to get rid of it because as you said earlier it can lead to apoptosis mm -hmm. and the cancer cell doesn't want to die mm -hmm. so it gets rid of a little piece of the signaling pathway but leaves part of it intact mm -hmm. and that leaves it vulnerable so then you can take away another piece of the pathway and kill the cell mm -hmm. and this is sort of think of it as like uh, legs on a stool you know, if you have a four-legged stool, you can get rid of one, but if you give it a two, bang. Mm -hmm. So people are making inhibitors to this pathway to kill cancer cells. And, and, and some of the very famous cancer genes like uh, breast cancer, BRCA1 and BRCA2, they're regulated by this pathway. So that's, that's sort of, you know, the sort of part of the reason that I got the prize last year. Is, is the applications of, of um, well, taking so, this... Science, this this research and then using it for potential treatments and potential future technologies. Uh, the I, I was given the prize for discovering it. Got it. Right. Got and it. And a lot of people. It's a I, whole big field now. A lot of people are making a lot of, of, of contributions. I don't know if this is true, but I imagine that that part of the in, inspiration for for giving the prize is seeing the potential application of this in future technologies. I mean, while uh, I do appreciate. I mean, I, I just love physics, but I appreciate that, that life sciences and, and discoveries like this are going to impact people's lives and are going to potentially save lives. So. Well, I think <laughs> I, I, these prizes are to celebrate science, right? And sometimes 
it's just beautiful science. Yeah. And yeah. not everything has an application it's directly, true. although you can never predict what's going to happen. You know, like for example, Kim Naismith won the prize this year. Can I say that out loud? Are you live? We are live. I don't know if I'm when I'm supposed to say these things. But. Uh, well, we, we, we know who the prize winners are, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. They, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, I didn't want to, like, spoil this. No, it's no, like, it's all good. Well, oh, my God, turn down the camera. Yeah, Let's no, the we've, been, we've been uh, interviewing the, the, the current and, laureates. Um, uh, for discovering how uh, cells, uh, when they're going through mitosis, uh, pair up chromosomes and then segregate yeah. chromosomes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, these are defective in some diseases that cause cancer and other uh, abnormalities, but it's really the absolute beauty of the mechanism yeah. of the science that I think led to this breakthrough prize. But many other breakthrough prizes really have huge impact on, uh, on people's health. For example, last year, uh, Jim Allison won for uh, immunotherapy, immune mm -hmm. checkpoint therapy, which is a, you know, the biggest breakthrough in cancer research in, in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so it spans the whole gamut from beautiful science to also beautiful science yeah. with wonderful applications. With potential applications, and, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. very nice to talk to you. Thank yes. you. Have a good evening. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Enjoy the night. Um, I feel like curing cancer is this thing that people are always like, almost this expression that people throw around is like, yeah. oh, what you doing? Curing cancer? <laughs> and these people are like, uh, yeah. 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 That is, in fact, what we're doing. Actually, yeah. yeah. I have contributed to some, some ways of treating and curing cancer. That is crazy. It's amazing.